Good evening, Fernwood. It is your giant hirsute podiatrist, Neil, and it's time for us to step our big foot in to another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 297 today from May 24th, 1977. We have had some things already this week, so let's take a look back. We started with Merle Jeter, who seemed like he was trying to get gussied up as Wanda returned from another knitting bee, and she is tired of going to those. It seems like Merle is tired of being down homey, or perhaps he just wants to dress up, and he chides Wanda for grabbing a bonbon from a box of candies, which apparently aren't meant for them. Merle gets a call, and it seems like the Republican Party is looking to put him up for presidency against Carter in 1980. And then Adeline steps out of her room and reminds everyone that Merle is a huckster and probably has ulterior motives for going out to see Mary Hartman. Merle reminds everyone that Tom specifically requested that Merle talk to Mary, and Wanda reminds Merle that he has a meeting afterward, and it seems like there may be some marital affection coming, but it's just another opportunity for Adeline to remind everyone that Merle can't be trusted. We cut over to the Hartman kitchen where Mary seems haunted. Everywhere she turns, she sees specters of a person who is on her mind. She doesn't trust her eyes and keeps checking places because the ghost of Dennis Foley is there with her. And finally she opens the door again and it is her husband Tom. Next door at the Haggers, Loretta and Charlie carry in young Johnny Doe because the doctors at the hospital were on strike. Luckily, they were able to grab Dr. Furman from the picket line. Of course, he's mainly focused on the fact that doctors can be sued for malpractice, but Loretta and Charlie are able to get him to focus on JD for a moment. Dr. Furman gives him some treatment and tells the Haggers that all they can do now is pray after which Dr. Furman quips a bit about the fact that he can still be sued. And then we're back at the Hartman kitchen where Merle easily enters and looks for Mary, followed then by Dennis Foley who is also looking for Mary. And these two would-be rivals for Mary's affection come face to face. Then Mary arrives with her groceries and after the two men help her with her bags, Dennis greets her with a friendly kiss after which Merle gives her a moralistic speech and tells Mary that if she is feeling lustful thoughts that she should count to ten and then offers her a friendly kiss of her own. And then Mary gets a call from Dennis who asks if she had licorice because that's what he tasted and Mary ends the call counting to ten. So everyone these turns have been really swift and really powerful so I guess we better proceed with this Tuesday episode. Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! How is he? Yeah. A little better, I think. <laughs> His pulse is a little stronger. Thank you so much, Lord. We, we really do appreciate this, and, and we, we just can't thank you enough. And if there's anything that we could possibly uh, ever do for you, will you just be sure and let us know? All right, amen. <sighs> Hi, Harry. How is he? 
He's a little better, I guess. Yeah. Really? I brought over some chicken soup. Oh, Mary, that is so mm. neighborly and sweet of you, honey. We really appreciate it, because, I mean, particularly what with all you've, you know, had to deal with lately. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've had to be so neighborly to so many people. You see, what I do, Charlie, is I make these very large bowls of chicken soup, and then I freeze it, and I find that it is absolutely the best thing for if you're sick or if something's wrong with you. Morning, Dr. Furman. Or even if you're well, it's fine, too. Morning. Morning. Uh, do me a favor, though. Just be very careful how you give it to the boy. Although it can be very therapeutic, it has been known to kill. I mean, I myself, I don't know if you heard about it or not, made the mistake once. I killed the town coach with it. And believe me, it's a guilt you don't need. Mary, that is just about the most neighborly thing I ever heard of. Here you are, you're bringing chicken soup to this poor boy when your own life is collapsing in a tragic heap. I mean, that, Mary, that's inspirational, that is. Is it collapsing? I mean, I had the feeling it was, I just wasn't sure. Um, doctor, is it all right if the boy has chicken soup? I could use a bowl of it myself. All right. Okay, I'll get it. I'll I'll try. Is it a big collapse or a little collapse? Oh, my life. Never mind. Good morning. I, I brought the boy some peanut butter sandwiches. Best food in the world. Uh, look how long it kept me going. If it wasn't for peanut butter, I, I, I might be dead. Because I, I might be as bored as I am. Doc, is peanut butter sandwiches all right? For the boy, no. For me, yes. No. Oh. This is smooth peanut butter. I, I like crunchy better. You don't wear dentures. No. You know what? It's all my fault. I mean, none of this would have happened. Poor child, if, if I had been watching correctly and paying attention to business and not letting him get into that sick type food and everything. Loretta, now you must understand that children have cast iron stomachs, absolutely cast iron. I mean, Heather ate two goldfish once and she lived through it. The goldfish died though, I hope. Still, I mean, none of this would have happened if I was a good mother. Johnny Doe, he woke up! Ms. Hagers, Ms. Hagers, Ms. Hagers, please. Ms. Hagers, please, oh, please, me. please. I'm sorry. Charles. Hi, honey. Hi. Well, Doc, how is he? He's gonna make it. Oh! He's gonna make it. Oh! 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 See, you're not such a bad mother after all. Listen, Charlie, now that everything's fine, do you think we can talk about it all? I mean, I have been such a terrible wife. Oh, in a minute, I mean, I... Mary. In oh, a minute, okay? okay? Well, I gotta get back on the picket line. Oh. You know, helping sick people's all right, huh? Boop, 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 boop. But, uh, these malpractice suits have got to end. We have blessing, Dr. Furman. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you just helping our little baby boy saving him and all. <laughs> Doctor, good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck with the boy. I hope you're doing the right thing with him being the, uh, the son of Bigfoot and all, you know. What, what do you mean, Doc? I mean, yeah, you're what saying do you that... Mean? Is... You think he's better off in the wilderness? Might not be a bad idea. Ah, what do I know? I'm just a doctor. I've been wrong before. Otherwise, I wouldn't need this. <laughs> Never give Johnny back to Bigfoot. Never. I'd die first. Charlie, so what do you think? It's okay, let me guess. Now's not the time for us to talk. Yeah, this is Tom Hartman, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was in your shop the other day, uh huh? Yeah, I'd like to come on by today if I could and, 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 and pick it up. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't deliver it. No, 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 it's a surprise, see? No, don't call her. Uh, no, don't. hey, listen, it's a surprise. I want to surprise her. That's right, yeah. I'll, I'll pick it up today, okay? okay, right. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. 
So what's the matter? Your phone broke down or something? No, no, I wanted to use your phone because uh, I wanted him to call here because it's a little surprise gift for Mary, you know, a little surprise. She having another birthday? No, it's just a, a random gift, that's all, you know. What is it? A dog. A dog? Yeah. Oh, boy. This is some family. Just when you think that they're completely boring, you find out that they're actually crazy. What do you got here? What is this thing? Oh, 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 you stick around and learn. Grab a hold of that in and help me out here. Just grab a hold of it and pull. Oh. Go ahead, pull her up. And a boy. What the hell is that? A bug gun bazooka for mass extermination. You see? I'll explain it to you. Get yourself some shotgun powder. Yeah. Stick it down the tube, yeah. set it off, and the sonic boom will blow the ears off of every bug in God's creation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And blow the roof off your house. Come on, George, forget it, will you? Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Ah, what the hell. You know that... Hey, Tom, 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 Tom. Tom. Hi, Mary. Hi, Heather. Hi, look at it. Hi, Ty. Holy cow, it's King Kong. Yeah. Hi, Mary. Hey, Mary, come on. It's it's for you. Oh, it's for me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, Tom. Oh, I, oh, I, I, gee, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. It's just, uh. Is he ass broken? <laughs> hey, come on, it's a gift. You don't ask if a gift is house broken. Oh no, the only reason I ask, the only reason I ask is I just happened to have waxed the floor today and I just wanted to make sure that the gift, you know, might show a little respect for that, that's all. What? You don't like him? Oh, love him, love him. Tom, why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you take him out, put him in the backyard, come back and I'll thank you for him. Okay, okay, well, listen, why, why don't you take him out? Go on, go on, go on. He'll love it, go on. Does he bite? Only strangers. Oh, you see, he and I are complete strangers, Tom. Oh, no, honey, look, 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 look. Yeah, look, look, look. at Mary, go ahead. See? You see, he loves you. You see, I can tell. Look at his eyes. See? You really think so? Yeah, I do. I really think so. Go on, take him. Go on, come on. Go on. Okay. He loves you, I know. Go on. Okay. That's it. Come on. Come on. Spot. Spot. Come on, Spot. Come on, little Spot. Let's, let's go ahead. Come on. <laughs> you see? You see? He likes her and she likes him. You see that? That's wonderful, isn't it? It's pathetic. What? You trying to win my back with a dog. What do you mean, win her back? Win her back from what? Only a real live Yummy Dreamboat named Dennis Foley. Dennis Foley. Wow, well, he's, he's really frisky. I mean, he's really, your dog is so big and frisky like that. What do you guess? What do you take? It takes uh, $2 a day, you know, to feed him with hamburger meat and stuff like that, huh? What do you think? Mary. What? How come my very own daughter knows that you're in love with Dennis Foley, huh? Oh, well, I never told you that. I... So you admit it, right? Oh, no. Oh, no, I don't admit it at all. I never, I have never said that I was in love with Dennis Foley. I... You don't Tom. have to, you don't have to, because it's written all over your face, right? No, well, no, no, then it's wrong, then you're wrong, Tom, I mean, or my face is wrong or something. I mean, I don't know, I really don't. I... I'll tell you, I'm going to take the dog back. I'm going to take him back. I'm going to take him back. No, no, please I'm don't. Take him back. No, please don't take the dog back. Please don't, Tom. Please, let's keep the dog. It'll be very important for our marriage. It really will be. Mary, you don't know what a marriage really should be. You really don't. I read that uh, divorcing kids uh, always get the dirty end of the stick. I don't want to be a product of a broken home. Neither do I. 
Neither do I, sweetheart. Care for joining you? Sure. George? Sure, why not? We called a truce for a week. You can go right on being the home wrecking rat that you are. I'm not going to say a word. Well, I appreciate that, George. And I ain't going to say a word about what a low down, rotten louse to think you are for the crummy way you treat that little woman of yours. Well, not I a word. That is sure civilized. I mean, I am just delighted to see you two guys acting so civilized. There's nothing worse than spoiling a good friendship with a thing like undying hatred, is there? Hey, speaking of friendship, what is with your old buddy there, Tom Hartman? I mean, he's, he's been acting like the last chapter of what you used lately. Well, he's got good reasons. He's got a certain party named Sergeant Dennis Foley sashaying around his wife. Who, Mary? Well, wait a minute, you know... About a year ago, when you were hauling hogs to Hoboken, my daughter and Foley kind of had a little romantic get-together, you know what I mean? And Tom's kind of worried about lightning striking twice in the same place. you got to be kidding. And this time it could be bad. Because I mean, okay. this time Sergeant Foley has his parents' permission. That's fine. <laughs> That's funny. You, you see that those people, that they're very high for those people. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. How's Mary? Everything fine at home? Yeah, fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. But just remember, we are your friends, Tom. And I'm your in-law. Hey, look, look, look. When I want advice from you guys, I'll ask for it, okay? Huh? All right? And I told that butt out! I still think we ought to have a talk with him. Maybe at a later time. I don't know. I hope he doesn't lose his head or anything. You know, back in the olden days when one fella messed around with another fella's wife, he'd just, he'd just get a gun and just blow him away. Don't tempt me, Mac. All right, now listen. Now listen. We are Tom's friends, right? We can't just... We can't just sit here and, and let his marriage go down the tubes. I don't know, Charlie. I mean, it seems to me like he doesn't care if it goes down the tubes. Doesn't seem like either one of them does. Well, what has that got to do with anything, man? I mean, if that's the way they feel, then they're wrong. I mean, that's one of the things that's wrong with, with marriage. I mean, married people are too close to the situation to know what's best for them. It's us outsiders that know what's the best for Tom and Mary. So, what do you think we ought to do? I'm going to tell you something. He's my son-in-law, and she's my daughter. and I'm not going to get involved. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Maybe it isn't our business. I sure would like to help old Tom Hartman out. Maybe I'm involved in one too many marriages as it is. She never did make her beds. Hey, Mary? It's Charlie. Mary? Mary? I 
came here to talk some sense into Mary, George, that's all. I mean, I guess you had the same idea, huh? Yeah. Hey, Mac! Who in the hell's that? That's Mac. He must have had the same idea, too. Well, I hope he doesn't have a different kind of idea. Hey, hey, Mac! What are you doing here? We all came here with the same idea, obviously. We're going to talk some sense into Mary, right? Oh, yeah. I hope so. Just calm down, George. Now, well, I just hope Tom doesn't find out, because, you know, we're poking our noses where we shouldn't be, you know. Yeah. That's all I got. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm oh, hit the deck, hit the deck, hit the deck. I mean, uh, I mean, some of the things are going to be but I can't even remember what they are right now. I mean, uh, especially, I'll tell you what really gets to me is, is the, way, the way people, everybody in town knows what's going on with us, you know? I mean, we should be able to settle these problems ourselves. I mean, it's not something for a town meeting. Tom, I really think you're exaggerating. I really do. I mean, I really don't think that anyone is losing any sleep talking about our problems except us. And uh, maybe uh, some of my family's a little bit involved. Well, I'll tell you, at the plant today, all the guys at the plant, all they were talking about was you and Dennis Foley, you know? And uh, I've had it with that. We, we have, you know, we have to have some privacy in our life. Well, Tom, I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I think that there's absolutely nothing to worry about because there's certainly nothing to... Tom, I have a wonderful idea. What? Um, I think you're going to love it. I think it's something you're just going to love. You want to go for a walk? Want a walk? you got to be kidding. Honey, I mean, I want to talk about us, about our privacy. I mean, you know, without having... I mean, where else to talk about it in, the, in our own bedroom? I mean, where no one else can interfere at all. Uh, uh, I, I see what you mean there. Um... Well, why don't, why don't we talk about it, though, in the, in, in, in the preface of the kitchen? What? I mean, our bedroom, it just, it makes me so sleepy. That's the whole thing. I mean, if we're going to straighten something like this out, I like to be alert and awake, you know, to work out these, what I consider, you know, a rather, uh, you know, big nothing problem. It's like a big nothing, that's honey, all. Honey, you're always asking me to communicate, right? Okay, so let's do it. I mean, even though we don't... Uh communicate all the time, you know, like uh, like normal and sane people. Let's communicate like uh, like a husband and wife. Yeah, Tom, this is definitely a breakfast table topic. It is not a double bed topic. Not. Mary, come on. What are, what are you doing? I mean, come on. You talk with sex about sex with the mayor on TV? You can't even talk it with your own husband in, 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 in your own bedroom? I mean, what's, what, what's the matter? Are you crazy? Well, uh, possibly, possibly. You see, Tom, uh, see, there, there, is, there, there are uh, times for uh, talking times and there are times for non-talking times, you know? I think this is, you know, one of the non-talking times. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So let's sit down. Yeah. Talk in the bed. You know, non-talking, just like we're used to, okay? Yeah. Sweetheart, why don't I uh, try to get a little straightened up here, okay? A little freshened up, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, oh, whoops. I don't think I'll get freshened up. I think I am fresh, and I'm sorry about that. I don't need that at all. I feel quite fresh. <laughs> What's going on with you, huh? Hey, come on. What? Why don't you take your clothes off? Huh? No, no, get... sweetheart, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm fine. Just where I am. I'm just so tired I can just drop off to sleep right like this. I'll just, I'll just doze off here. Honey, Mary, come here. Come here. Come here. Let me help you, okay? Come here. Uh, Tom. Mm. 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 I love it. Sweetheart, don't worry about it. It's just probably a fuse, that's all. Oh, I yeah, just oh. a fuse. You know what? You know what? what? Oh, Tom, I'm... I just want to tell you, what? I love you so much. I really do. Mm -hmm. And I always will. Yeah. You know, I wish those nosy guys at the plant could see us now. Mm. Uh, it's all right, sweetheart. You know what we can do sometime? What? We'll have them over. Well, I certainly did feel the need for some comic relief, so thank you. We start with the Haggers and especially Dr. Furman staying in to make sure that JD is okay. And we get a visit from Mary Hartman who brought over a pot of chicken soup, which is what she does when people are ill, as we have seen in the past. And when I saw that pot, 
I certainly felt that call back, which Mary did elucidate on, right? She did say exactly what happened last time someone ate some of her chicken soup in the show. If you don't remember, then that is Leroy Fetters. And we have an episode of rerun season that we can catch up on that moment. So I'll post that up here. Dr. Furman is there, of course. He doesn't love the uh, malpractice suits that can threaten doctors' careers. But what's good about this is that Johnny Doe is gonna make it. There's the question that is raised that maybe JD would be better off in nature. And Dr. Furman being a doctor maybe seems like an authority to the Haggers, but that's a question. Does JD belong with the Haggers, or does JD belong out in nature closer to Bigfoot? And I wonder, because JD was a foundling, right? JD was left, at least the way I interpret it, JD was left by Bigfoot. And we haven't seen any hide nor hair of uh, our Sasquatchy friend in quite a while. So... I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the relationship between Loretta and Charlie and JD is starting to build and I have no idea what his life was like with the Sasquatch. So I can only speculate but I do feel like Loretta and Charlie honestly love this boy and I would be sad for them to be separated and I feel like JD is starting to establish some kind of connection to the Haggers. So another reason to be sad if they're separated. But it is a question worth asking what is best for this boy. And then we cut over to the Shumway house where Tom has snuck in to use the phone because he has a surprise for Mary. And we see a little bit more of the development of the bug gun, which is the bazooka. Luckily, we don't see that go off because that's a really bad idea. And we'll see more of the gift that Tom got for Mary in the next scene because Mary is hesitant to meet this great Dane. I think it's a sweet gesture, but what Mary really needs from Tom is more than a dog. And I think Heather has been an additional wedge in this relationship. I think somewhat because she's smart and snarky, she doesn't sense how troubling things are, right? Because she points out Dennis to Tom and Tom, his jealousy raises. Mary still loves Tom. She's hesitant about the dog, which is his offer of love, right? If we were talk to talk about love languages, Tom is offering a gift. In this case, I barely know anything about love languages, only what I pick up from social media, but Tom is offering a gift to Mary, but she doesn't seem to appreciate it. And maybe it's not the gift for Mary. It's certainly not the way to Mary's heart. It's certainly not what Mary needs in terms of resolving her crumbling relationship, right? That was something she was worried about at the Haggers. She was worried about how much it was falling apart. Tom's jealousy gets stoked up and he says he's going to bring the dog back, which is sad because I like dogs and I wanted to see a dog in the show. Also sad because things aren't quite working out with Mary and Tom in this case. And then we're at the break room with the fellas. It's George and Charlie and Mac and they of course, only have one real topic to talk about, which is Tom and Mary's relationship. George and Mac have a detente on their situation for at least another couple of days. And Tom comes in and he is really sensitive based on the hurt that he is feeling after his jealousy is stoked by Heather. But he wants privacy in this case. He wants nothing to do with everyone at the factory talking about them except that they do feel care for the Hartmans. They do feel care for this relationship that they see dissolving in front of them. I mean, it was dissolving enough that Mary was desperate to, enough to call Merle while he was on live television. So everyone knows what's going on in the Hartman household, if you know Hartmans. 
if you're familiar with Mary Hartman's voice, and since Mary has some level of celebrity in town, ever since the David Susskind show at the end of season one, she's been a minor celebrity. So everyone in Fernwood knows who Mary Hartman is, and everyone now knows that Tom and Mary are in trouble. George says they're very close to him, right? Both Mary and Tom are important people to him, and he says that he's not going to get involved, and Mac and Charlie aren't sure what to do either. And then we cut to the next scene, which starts with George coming in. He was the first to protest against that idea of intervening in Tom and Mary's relationship, but he is also the first to get into their bedroom, then Charlie, and then Mac. And based on yesterday, it is absurd that the Hartmans don't lock their back door because everyone can enter their home with really no sense of the need to protect you know your life and property however let's take that where it is just say that all three of them realize that they are there and then they hear tom and mary approaching and in farce form right they find a place to hide mary and tom are trying to talk through the issues in their relationship, which I think is really what Tom and Mary need, except that the difference in this situation is that Tom has specifically said he doesn't like that people are in their business, and there are three people who are in their business at that moment, which Mary realizes and Tom does not. So Mary, I think, would be willing to talk through this with Tom, except that her privacy is at that moment being violated. I think perhaps Mary would realize that the three men are there because they care. It's a little weird. They're not there intending to steal or, or hurt someone. They're there because they hope to help. They hope to intervene. I think Mary might realize that or maybe things were a little bit too stressful for her to process this. But Mary keeps discovering interlopers in their bedroom so mary says well mary's thought process i think is that our privacy is being busted right now and tom is talking about privacy let's just not tell tom what's going on so mary says it's not time for talking so tom switches gears and says well then let's do some non-talking which perhaps could be something that mary needs right mary does need some of the affection but you know in this instance, she's still uncomfortable that three men are watching them. Of course, Tom and Mary do escalate to the point where kissing happens, right? The lovemaking is about to begin, it's imminent. And at that point, Mary gives them the signal that they better GTFO. And with that, we see there's a nonverbal, right? Because I know that in previous episodes Mary had said that Tom wasn't giving her sexual attention lately either so this is maybe one bit of improvement but there's still a lot of conversation that really needs to happen in this relationship Tom was putting forth an effort to make things better and it was ironically ruined by people who were trying to help and of course, Tom's comment at the end, I wish those guys could see me now, also ironic. Well, y'all, this was our Tuesday episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions down in the comments. Thank you for stepping your big foot in, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.